Coyote, Bobcat, Fox. Shot in the eye. In each case, finesse, precision. A mathematically calculated shot in a spot where it would kill immediately, yet do no harm whatsoever to the specimen. I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, do you think this man's act was unintentional? Stop it! I tell you, it was an accident. He threw the pitchfork. Then that won't do any good. But he's lying. I'm not a murderer. I'm not a killer. I, I didn't mean it. Order, order, or I'll clear the courtroom. A man is on trial for his life. Please conduct yourselves accordingly. Proceed, Mr. Henshaw. I don't have to repeat the medical testimony. Five brain shots, each of them precisely in the middle of an eye socket. The last one, a human being. I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to reflect on the odds against the defendant's contention that this last shot was accidental. He threw up the rifle in self-defense, he says. The shot struck the precise center of Tim McCaffrey's left eye. What are the odds? One in a million? A billion? Think about that. Isn't the other explanation far more plausible? That Tim McCaffrey caught him trespassing? And I didn't! I didn't do it! I'm demanding that you do your duty as citizens of this state. I demand the death penalty in the case of the people versus Benjamin Hollister. Benjamin Hollister, will you please rise? Benjamin Hollister, you have been found guilty of murder in the first degree. Therefore, you will, on the 22nd day of this month, be removed to the penitentiary at Glenville and there be incarcerated for the rest of your natural life. on Alamo Creek. Big adobe ranch house, Apache bullet pox in the walls, even has its own well in the courtyard. Fourteen rooms? Fourteen rooms? I'm gonna turn it into a private museum, put a sign on the highway, charge admission, make this collecting bug pay off after all these years. I wish I could help you. Well, you can. I've got room plotted out for your things. Now here, here is an east window, and there's a door. Now you do the rest. Do what? Design the inside. Cases for your books, drawers for your mounted specimens, display cases. I'll fix it any way you want it. And you do it. I want it to be yours, Ben. You kidding? I know what you're going to say, Dad. You've got to have hope. Something to hang on to. I'm sorry. But... It's no good, Dad. But we've got 15 minutes. Goodbye, Dad. Goodbye, boy. I'll see you next month. He don't belong here. He'd only eat. That's the trouble. He won't eat. No, it's out of the question. He's been examined by a board of psychiatrists and found perfectly normal. Medically, he's 100%. Except that he'll die inside of a year if you leave him where he is. 
Mr. Hollister, would you care to read the medical report? I'm not talking about his blood pressure or his respiration or his metabolism, Mr. Henshaw. I'm talking about his soul. That boy is dying right now. Mr. Hollister, I understand your concern. But it's out of your hands, that I know. I'm only telling you that your signature on a petition would probably get him a parole. Mr. Hollister... Please, please hear me out, Mr. Henshaw. The election's come and gone. You're secure in your job. You've got nothing to lose. Old man McCaffrey can't touch you now. Please, please, look into your heart, Mr. Henshaw, and ask yourself if you really believe that boy belongs in prison, if he really is a menace to society. I'll forgive you everything, Mr. Henshaw. I, I know you're under enormous political pressures and have to give in to them sometimes. I'll forgive you everything. If only you will try to do that boy justice now. He can't live in prison. He's like a hawk in a cage. He won't eat. He's just withering away. Come now, Mr. Hollister. Get hold of yourself. Months later, he was dead. He'd lost interest in life. That was years ago. But it's all here, all in this room. What he had, what he did, what he was. How many years? I don't like to count them. It doesn't matter anyway. I have him here with me. I can feel his presence in this room, from his books, from his things. Nothing on this earth is permanent, Mr. Clovis. We aren't given title to anything, you know. Just a lease. His was short. Mine's longer. At least he was not the one to be left behind to grieve. That's some consolation, isn't it? I suppose so. So perhaps you can understand now why I was a little amused at your archaeopsychology. There's only so much of a man imprisoned in his possessions and the things he makes with his hands so much, no more. Ben's spirit hangs above this room, but you can't sense it from these cold, inanimate things. Not unless you knew Ben. Well, I'd better lock the back door. You'll excuse me? Of course. Satisfied, Mr. Clovis? Now I am, yes. I ought to tell you that I'm not an archaeopsychologist. I sort of invented that. You're from the district attorney's office. That's right. A murder case never goes out of date. You know, it took almost a year to put him there. I remember the excitement of the manhunt. The most dangerous game. Not a game. Murder. Disagree. It was neither. It was an execution. The execution of Henshaw, the man who murdered my son. I don't think the law will look at it in quite that light. Tell me, how did you do it? Did you lie and wait for him outside his house, or did you... <laughs> As near as we can tell, this skull belonged to a civilization here in the Southwest that we call Proto-Pueblo. One of its marks, as you see, is a flattening in the rear of the head caused by strapping the baby onto a cradleboard before the skull was completely calcified. 
Let's compare him with a modern male Caucasian. You see, his head is not flattened in the back at all. Notice how an injury left a mark on the bone. The same thing here. Another male Caucasian, about 45 years old, I'd say from the degree of calcification in certain areas. Athletic type, double spiral fracture. Typical ski injury, leaving one leg about an inch and a half shorter than the other. Thank you.